Now Entering is made possible with support from South Madison Community Foundation, St. Vincent Anderson Regional, and Citizen State Bank, Edward Jones Financial Advisors, Brett A. Bubalo and Dustin A. Pennington, Fredericks Incorporated Contractors, Integrity of Madison County, Martin Insurance Group, The Signage, Town of Pendleton, Solutions for eBiz, Anderson Madison County Visitors Bureau, and Anderson Creative. Hi, I am Town Manager Tim McClinic. You are now entering the Town of Pendleton. Located about 20 minutes north of Indianapolis in Madison County, more than 4,200 people call Pendleton home. Pendleton is a growing town with a growing sense of pride for its rich history, its thriving businesses, and its strong community focus. It's the result of a lot of work by countless dedicated people over many years. Today, Pendleton has established itself as one of central Indiana's most attractive places to live. But the beauty of Pendleton, residents will tell you, goes well beyond its tree-lined streets and picturesque waterfall. It's in the stories told here by the residents themselves through their own photos and videos. You are now entering Pendleton, Indiana. I've lived in Madison County my whole life. Uh, I was actually born in Elwood, Indiana, but I've lived in Pendleton probably 50 years of my life and uh, lived probably 50 years within four blocks of where I live right now on Broadway Street. Broadway is one of the major north-south streets in town. Uh, we're sort of limited on our thoroughfares through town because of the railroad tracks and Fall Creek, but Broadway is one of the major streets. It's still the only brick street that's left in Pendleton, that's exposed. Um, it has a, it's a wide street with uh, tree lines, the sidewalks, and uh, in front of my house, I still have the ring in the curb where I can tie my horse up. And the neighbors have been around for several years and several generations, and so it's a very unique uh, neighborhood. My grandparents bought our house, the house I live in, in 1955. They actually purchased it off the daughter of the original builder. It's an 1890s Queen Anne home. The builders lived in it, and then his daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter lived in it, and then my grandparents purchased it. When I purchased it, I pretty much renovated it from top to bottom, new siding, new windows, doors, tore all the plaster out of it. It's been a work of love. I'm passionate about the history. I love building construction. I love old architecture, and I love the fact that I'm maintaining family history also. Um, in my house, there's been six generations of family that have slept there. Uh, five of the generations have actually lived in it. My grandchildren have not lived in it yet, but they have slept there and are only four blocks away from us again. So, yeah, The location of our house is, I think, the best location in Pendleton. Uh, it's in within walking distance of the downtown. It's within walking distance of the school systems, the elementary and intermediate school at this time. It used to be included the junior high and high school, but expansion of the school system blew them away. Uh, when I was growing up, there was eight teachers uh, in the elementary school that lived within five houses radius of me. So pretty much if you got in trouble in school, it beat you home. <laughs> On October 31st is a very big day in, in the, the neighborhood along Broadway. It actually looks like a parade. Um, it starts about 6 o'clock in the evening, trick-or-treating does, and at 9 o'clock in the evening it ends. But by 8 o'clock, you've already ran out of candy, typically. And when I say you ran out of candy, we typically get enough candy to give out to 1,000 kids. 
Uh, our population is 4,250, so I'm pretty sure all those kids don't live right in Pendleton, but we're, we love it and we're glad to get there. I think the future of our neighborhood is going to stay the way it is. Um, it's people will come and go, uh, paint colors are going to change, but I think that everybody respects the fact that Broadway is still the way it is and there's going to be very little change in it. So I think that that's a good solid foundation there. The town of Pendleton is going to change in the near future just because of the growth coming up I-69. Um, we're currently going to a branding project and we've interviewed a ton of people and everybody agrees that there's going to be change. We have no intent on trying to stop it. We just want it to grow in the Pendleton way. I'm Ron Barnhart. I'm park superintendent here at Falls Park. I would like to tell a story about how Falls Park was formed and came about and how important it is to the community. The state of Indiana started the state park system in 1916 and it filtered into small communities and Pendleton was one that reached out to it and in 1919 they decided let's clean up an area down by the falls and Fall Creek and turn it into something of beauty for the community. It took all of the community to do it over time and which created a lot of memories, created a lot of continuity between uh, groups and that is what's important about it today because it continues on into this century. The Lions Club sponsors a June Jamboree. Uh, we have a church that does a Easter egg hunt. And we have a pet parade, we have a Halloween parade. We have a car show put on by the Kiwanis who serve the world famous K-Burger. There's just a multitude of different events that are all community driven. The picture that I see when I think of Falls Park is the fourth at the Falls event. Hundreds of people with smiles on their faces, finishing it off with a nice 30 minute fireworks show. It gives me not just a a feeling of satisfaction for the community, but also for myself that we're able to continue that type of atmosphere for folks as time goes on. I am Jessica Smith. I will be talking about the Pendleton Historical Museum and its creation. The idea behind having the museum was first discussed with a group that was planning the annual Pendleton High School Alumni Day in 1979, and uh, the idea was very well received in the community. There was a lot of interest in having the museum. Once the idea behind the museum was formed and the organization took off, uh, it was a community effort to get the museum to where it is today. Uh, the park department um, approached the initial museum board about leasing the old bathhouse and the museum board of course did that um, and that's the building that we're sitting in today. It looks a little different than it did back then. The first museum board was very proud of the fact that they were able to construct the building debt-free. Uh, that was a very big accomplishment. But that didn't mean that the work was done. On dedication day, you know, they didn't just open the doors and say, okay, we're done, we'll just leave it like it is. We're always looking for ways to change, uh, improve what we have, build upon what was there. We still get people that come into the museum today and look, you know, at a certain corner downstairs and say, oh, I helped mud those, that wall right there. That was my section. I was in charge of that. I joined the museum board in uh, January of 2013 and I have um, been an active participant on the board since then, um, always coming up with new ideas to create um, and how we can display certain items throughout the museum and um, how we can engage the public more into coming into the museum or volunteering. 
for me, part of what makes Pendleton Pendleton is the sense of community and volunteerism throughout, and so this was just my way of giving back. I'm Katie Burke, and I've lived in Pendleton for 65 years, and I feel very blessed to be able to say that. I just felt like the whole town was my own personal playground. It was like an enchanted forest for me. Um, we lived up on a hill overlooking Fall Creek, and from there we could see the Pendleton Avenue Bridge, knowing that it led into town, and to, we could see the park, and knowing that that's probably where we were headed on any particular day. In the summer, we would go to the park in the morning, we'd take wax paper to make the slide really slick, um, which was pretty dangerous for any other kids that might want to do it. And then, you know, we'd wander the town. We could go anywhere t in town and we knew where most everybody lived. And so we always felt safe and like there was family close. My dad owned the Pendleton Lumber Company and so I would go down there and play. I loved the smell of the cut wood. I'd play in the stacks of the kindling, you know, the scrap wood, and I was always trying to make something out of it. And I'd play in the stacks of wood. Then we'd wander down to the drugstore. We'd sit up at the counter, and um, usually we'd get root beer in a frosted mug, and we thought we were real big stuff. We were hot shots. Um, we would go down to the post office and look through the wanted posters and talk about how scary some of those people were. Um, and we would just pass our time by playing outside all around town. My mom and dad had a dinner bell and you could hear it all over town. And so we were pretty free to roam all day long, but when we heard that dinner bell ring, we'd better be home now. And that was just Everybody knew, oh, the Craigs have to be home now, must be time for supper. <laughs> in the summer, it was playing in the park and swimming in the pool. You know, they'd dam up the pool, the water would fill up, and that was the big deal, was to come to Pendleton and swim in the, in the pool. And I learned to swim in the creek. Uh, we had metal tags and with a number on it, and so we'd buy a yearly pass or a summer pass, and we'd have to put that metal tag, we'd have to sew it on our swimsuits, and that's how we could get in every day. Um, the museum now sits on the, what was the old bathhouse, and, and that was pretty special. In the winter, it was all about the ice skating. We'd all have skates, uh, we'd go down to the pond, we'd use the heel of our skate, the blade, the back blade, to chip away at the ice to see how thick the ice was, which really didn't matter because we were gonna go ice skating anyway. Um, we'd take shovels and clear away the snow. I remember one time the fire truck came down and sprayed it with water, so it was really slick. Um, we'd play crack the whip, we'd jump over sleds, we'd try to do all the things we saw in the Olympics, jump and turn and fall and and then when we'd get really, really cold, we'd go to the DX station on the corner and buy a can of kerosene. We'd go over to the shelter house and outside the shelter house, we would gather sticks or wood or something and build a fire and we'd sit there and warm our feet. It was just an awesome place to grow up. And again, I always felt safe. I just, I felt like it was all my own. The arts have always been a very important part of life in Pendleton. And one of the reasons is that the uh, South Madison Community School Corporation has always been very supportive, as have been the members of the public and the parents and the whole community have always supported the arts. Jackie Brown is the auditorium director at Pendleton Heights High School. She's also responsible for the theater program. We've been very lucky in our program to have a number of wonderful successes with our students going on to other various areas of theater and the performing arts. Casey Jamerson, a former graduate that went through our choir department and did some plays with us, was also very lucky to be able to perform on Broadway in the Broadway production of Bring It On. 
We've also had numerous successes with some of our kids, such as Alex Williams, who just got a recording contract in Nashville. The tech or behind the scenes people also do a very good job because they have been very lucky to learn their craft here. All of our productions are student led. Uh, they run lights, sound, build sets. They do all the things that they would do in a theater professionally. And so many of them choose to follow that path and go on into a career in theater. Chris Taylor is the band director at, at Pendleton Heights High School. He also is an important part in the, the arts, arts scene in Pendleton and the community around. Our program has about 150 students spread throughout a number of different ensembles. We're a big part of the community and enjoy being a part of uh, the South Madison area. One of the things that we do or show off a lot is our marching band. That's where people see us in public a lot, but there are a lot of different other aspects. Uh, we have our concert bands, which participate in festivals and contests, and that's where students really learn how to be great musicians. Uh, we have our jazz program, which also includes a big jazz festival that we host every year. And then we have our indoor percussion and winter guard groups, which compete throughout the winter. And they've all had uh, great successes in their programs in both the competitive aspect and just the aspect of being uh, learning how to be good students through music. A lot of our students go on to participate in music throughout their lives, and we encourage that. That's one of our biggest successes, is making sure students have a lifelong appreciation of the arts. In 2013, a small group of people got together and said, what if we put out a call for artists to see if they would be interested in organizing and seeing what we could do as far as <clears throat> developing their skills, promoting arts in Pendleton. The first year we met in a temporary uh, gallery, but we were able to uh, raise funds. We are a nonprofit, and we were able to uh, have a monthly show. Just nearly every month we had a brand new show of art, art that was made by our members and also community members, and some from out of town. In 2014, in the spring, we were able to buy our own building. The building that we purchased is at 119 State Street, and so we call it Gallery 119. It was uh, formerly the, the Roxy Theater back in the day when I was in uh, school when I was a kid, and then it was the Pendleton Gas Company for a while, and then it was the Pendleton Light and Power Company, and then it was the town hall for several years and so the building was left empty and it kind of fell into disrepair so when we bought this building we were not only poor and had to find money to fix this up but we also had to find muscles and will and uh, energy and time and by golly we did it and so now we have this wonderful gallery and we are still showing brand new shows nearly every month, and we have classes going all the time for adults and older teens. Last summer was our first kids art camp, and we re repeated it again this year, and it was just a huge success. The kids loved it, the parents loved it, uh, the Pendleton Artist Society members loved it. There have been a lot of studies that show that access to making art playing music, being involved in the arts is beneficial to academic studies. And so for that reason alone, that is a real good reason to have arts in the school. But it just makes life better. Uh, nothing uh, enriches and um, warms up life as well as art does. It just makes life worth living. More Than Conquerors is the name of the after-school program that I started with two other young ladies um, from Pendleton, Esta Henderson and Katie Torrance and I. All three of us graduated from Pendleton. We all grew up here. Um, we all kind of went away um, after graduating high school, but we're all back. During the school year, our after-school program runs um, from right when the bell rings until 6 p.m. Um, we have a middle school program and an intermediate program and each program has a game time where we get to know the kids and we get to play with them and get to just be goofy with them. We have a snack time and then we have a lesson time or 
um, where they learn about how to be a good adult or grow up to be good people. And then we do homework time where we get to sit with them and just talk about their days and help them with homework. During the summer, um, our kids at More Than Conquerors, we have a camp available. And in that camp, it's um, for about nine weeks and we focus on serving others. Our camp this year was called Camp Victorious. And um, throughout the summer, we had several community service projects. We weeded the Pendleton Community Garden, which they totally loved. We also walked dogs and cats at the Humane Society in Anderson. We packed um, overnight bags for a local organization, Safe Families. We sorted clothes for another local organization, Outfitters, here in Pendleton. Um, we passed out gift cards at Walmart to deserving families. Um, and just these kids would come and they know that today is about serving people and they're so excited and they're just on fire to help others. More Than Conquerors has um, several church partners who give. We also have private donors who give. And we'll have events and fundraisers that businesses always get behind. And the town is really supportive of our program and even the school system. We have our program in the schools, which makes it completely free and easy for students to arrive and to hang out with us. Our ultimate goal is that these will be our adults. We have, um, you know, 10 to 14 year olds. So in 10 years, this is the future of Pendleton. When you see the kids that I see every day and you see their hearts and you see how excited they are to be in Pendleton, what they want for the town, what they want to do to make it better, there's no worry about where this town is going. We live in the house on the hill, which is called Parker Hill. To the locals, it is the house on the haunted hill. And um, we got the home several years ago when we were out um, traveling around Pendleton. My husband's a contractor. And so we saw this wonderful house on the hill. And so we thought, wow, if we could just get that and restore that, that would be a wonderful project. When we took possession of the home, we had to completely restore it, which means new electrical, new plumbing, new furnaces. Um, all the woodwork was in wonderful shape because it had been unoccupied for 40 years, so it was just dirty. It just needed to be cleaned up. The house has 14 rooms, uh, four, four bathrooms. It has a big walk-in attic. Um, and we're still working on it, always working on it. Um, the original builder of the home was George W. Parker, and he was a colonel in the Civil War. And he has a wonderful career. He was a farmer, he owned a warehouse, and he was a two-term sheriff of Marion County. He died in the upstairs bedroom, which um, actually has his name inscribed on the wall. It says Colonel Parker on it. I don't feel like the house is haunted, but my kids will tell you differently. When our son Joshua was five years old, um, he came into our bedroom, it was, must have been about 2 o'clock in the morning, and he was um, crying. I said, Joshua, what's wrong? And he says, well, I saw a man. And I said, you saw a man? And I said, tell me what you saw. And she, he said, I saw a man in a, in a blue suit. It had shiny buttons all over it, and he had a beard, and he had white hair. And automatically, I thought, well, that sounds like Colonel Parker. So I said, Joshua, that's wonderful. And he just kind of looks at me like, Mom, you're kind of crazy. There's this man hanging over me on my bed. And I said, no. I said, that's Colonel Parker, and he's a good person. He had three children of his own. He was a sheriff. He protected people. I said, he was just checking up on you. The locals believe that it is haunted, and so we ordered a pizza earlier in our time of restoring that. We had moved in at that time, and the pizza delivery guy came up, and um, I asked him to come in, step into the kitchen, and he says, oh no, Mom, that house is haunted. And I looked at him, and I said, this house isn't haunted, and I said, just come on in. And he absolutely refused to come in. We've never had a trick-or-treater up there, never. We've been there all those years. When we looked at it, we didn't actually see what everybody else was seeing. We were seeing something that we felt like it, it could be. And of course it is. It's completely different from what it was. But it's exactly what we envisioned it to be. Back in 1988, uh, we were aware that some of our old historic buildings were being torn down. And so four other ladies and I sat and talked and, and we commiserated. And 
we thought, well, we needed to make a bold statement because we are located between Anderson and Indianapolis, and we're right sitting almost on top of I-69, so it's easy to come and go, and we knew we, we wanted to preserve our town because we all loved it. Finally, on the hottest day in 1988, August 8th, 1988, we decided we were going to be an organization and we called ourselves Historic Fall Creek Pendleton Settlement, which would reflect our uh, pioneer days. Somebody suggested that we call uh, Historic Landmarks Foundation of Indiana. It's now called Indiana Landmarks. Um, and they, they sent a young man out and he encouraged us to uh, work to get on the National Register of Historic Places. We uh, ran a home tour and earned enough money in that one home tour to hire a consultant. And she sat with us for days <laughs> and studied and uh, did research and took pictures and she wrote our application. That was June 27th, 1991 we were actually listed in the National Register of Historic Places. I've always loved old buildings, and um, I didn't realize it when I was real young, but I realized that the reason I loved old buildings was because of their proportion, their beauty, their materials. And then when I came to this town and, and loved the old houses and saw a few things being torn down, that prompted me and, and inspired me to do something. And we did. <laughs> Pendleton people have always loved their history. I mean, when we moved here, uh, people would tell us things about our history. I mean, just conversation. It was very unusual to have that much interest in local history. Our 52 years of living in Pendleton has been a wonderful journey. We've raised our three sons here. And um, out of our 13 grandchildren, we have five or six that are still around in this community, and they carry their love of Pendleton with them wherever they go. We still have that feeling here in our local town that we want to stay Pendleton. We, we don't want to be Indianapolis. We want to be Pendleton, and I think that has been passed from one generation to another. And I, and I think it's really, that's the part of the reason Pendleton is such an interesting town in which to live.